I'm Nick from Local Spicery. And we are actually at Local Spicery here in Marysville, California, where Nick is the proprietor and the spicerer of Local Spicery. And this is where my favorite spices come from. And you're actually going to cook for us today. We are. We're going to do a curry. Uh, and this, uh, as you know, the genesis of this was from uh, one of your followers yep. who had asked you to, to kind of address the complexity of curry. So we're going to try to do that today. Which I said, I cannot do, but I know a guy <laughs> who can. So we came to the expert today. And so um, we're going to cook, and then you're also going to talk to us about curry, the origins, what the differences are in different blends and so forth. So I'm pretty excited because I'm going to learn a lot today. Plus, I get to taste test. That's, you know, <laughs> it's a tough job, you guys, but somebody's got to do it. Well, I'm excited and we're excited to have you guys back here. It's been two years yeah. and I think uh, last time we talked about doing this, we said as soon as, as, soon as the virus is over, we want to get together again. and. So this is a really, really good sign. It is. It is. I'm, it's a privilege to be here. I'm excited to be here. So um, what are you making today? So we're going to do a pumpkin curry. Uh, uh, you know, it, this, you know, being deep fall, it's a, it's a perfect time to, to be doing it. Um, the, the curry powder that we're going to use is, uh, it's called Bokop curry. Let me just pull it out here. There it is. That's the wrong one. Hold on. I'm going to get a good looking jar. Here. So, you know, Bokop curry, it's named after a, uh, 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 <clears throat> a neighborhood in Cape Town, South Africa. Okay. Uh, so we think of it as the South African curry, although really it draws its flavors uh, from Malaysia and is real similar to a lot of Malaysian curries. But in Cape Town, the Bokop area is where the Malaysian people live. and and you know, we have people that come down to the store on a regular basis who are, uh, are from Cape Town that tell us that whenever they needed to get spices or curries, they would go to Bokop, which is oh. really the, gener the genesis of, uh, of this blend. Um, it is a really good, uh, uh, very forgiving curry. Uh, it's a good cross between a lot of curry traditions. It's as close as we get to a, a, you know, a yellow English curry or a Caribbean curry. And, uh, so, and I think it's a good way to show how easy it can be to make a curry dish. Nice. And a lot of people think of curry, they think of something really hot and spicy, but it doesn't have to be, right? It, it doesn't have to be. And in fact, what, for at, at Local Spicery, all of our curries are blended very, very mild. And the reason why we do that is you can always add heat, but you almost can never take it away. Yeah. So if you like it hot, you'll still like our curries, but I do encourage you to, to add your favorite heat source. Uh, either, you know, it, you, you can either do a blend of different chilies or just try something simple like some cayenne. Perfect. Okay, let's get started. Okay. So, uh, you know, curries, first thing I want to point out, it's, it's not a difficult dish. It's very easy, very, very fast. Uh, when I think about a curry, how long does it take to cook a curry? Uh, usually, it, uh, uh, you, you start the rice, and by the time the rice is done, the curry's done as well. It all comes together in an instant. So I'm going to start this by starting my rice. So this can be an easy weeknight meal. You get home from work, and you can whip this up. It's an easy uh, weeknight meal, but it's also, you know, it can be a little bit showy if you want for guests. It's uh, oh, nice. very, very simple. Okay. So what we're going to be, the ingredients we're going to be using, you know, we have a, uh, a sugar pumpkin. Uh, these are sometimes sold as pie pumpkins, but there, it's a very, as you can see, it's a very, very small pumpkin. You can see I cut about a half of it off. What you want is, with the seeds, just over a pound of, of pumpkin. I think that this was about 1.1, 1.2 pounds of pumpkin when I cut it in half. And then we clean out the, uh, clean out the seeds, we peel it, and we chop it. So it's a, at about this size. A word about how, you know, the size of the pumpkin, that's what really drives how long you need to cook your dish. If you've got less time, you can cut your pumpkin or squash down to smaller pieces, and, uh, and it'll cook much, much faster. Nice. Um, <clears throat> Onion, and, and we can, we'll get into this a little bit, but a lot of curries begin with a, uh, an onion saute. Uh, it's interesting because whenever I think of a dish that begins with an onion saute, I instantly suspect it's got to have a French uh, uh, background to it. Uh, the oldest, uh, oldest curries 
uh, that we know, and this is uh, prehistoric, go back almost 5,000 years, archaeologists have found in cooking implements in India uh, uh, a combination of, uh, of garlic, uh, ginger, and turmeric, which mm -hmm. would make a very basic curry. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so if you, you, you think about that, where, where's the onion? Best that I can just tell you, knowing what it takes to get the sauce to develop, probably was an awful lot of garlic. So we're also going to add for color some red bell pepper. And uh, this is a mishmash. One of them I got at the farmer's market, two at the local uh, health food store. They're all organic. I love them. Yeah, and They're then also, also for color, at the very end, we're going to chop in and put some, uh, some Tuscan kale. Uh, you know, greens are great things to add into curries. Um, uh, they're great for color, they're great for flavor, and they're, they're, they're highly nutritious. So, uh, oh, one last thing. <clears throat> I'm going to start by making a, uh, uh, a bouillon. Um, I'll, I'm just going to do uh, hot water from, this, from the tap here. The reason why I do this first is while I'm sauteing, if, uh, if uh, I need to deglaze the pan rather than using water, I like to use the, uh, the bouillon. So this is uh, local spice risotto being bouillon. I love this. It's, I, it's so easy. It is, and you know what? When we do a road trip, I take this with me yeah. to do a road trip, right? Because it doesn't take up very much space. All I have to do is add some water to it. And we take an Instant Pot and we can cook right in it. Yeah. So that's, that's all it takes. Um, if you have, you know, if you, you have some, uh, some homemade uh, veggie broth, if you have some broth in a carton that's in your fridge or just came home from the uh, grocery store, you can use that as well. But as you can see, this makes a very rich umami-based broth, uh, super simple, and we're ready to go. So let's get started. All right. Um, generally, I'll saute at a very high temperature. I can hand you anything. Okay. You have an assistant today. Not, I'm not used to that. That's I know. Great. Actually, you know what would be great? In that drawer right there, you'll find a uh, wooden handle with a red kind of a... That's it. All right. You have your favorite? I have I, one. I do. I have a favorite, too. So, I mean, so this thing, just if you're cu curious, uh, you, it works as a spatula. It's, uh, it's silicone, so it, so it uh, functions at a high temperature, but it also works as a spoon. Uh, yeah. I don't know where I got it, but I love it. Uh, so uh, we're going to begin the saute just with some onion. This is uh, this is one large uh, uh, red onion that's been, as you can see, it's been it's been diced, not minced. I like to have a little bit of uh, uh, you know a little bit of size to it, so that uh, you know it doesn't cook down to be too creamy. We want this to be like a stew. Nice, and I love a red onion. Yeah. Mostly, you know, when I do this, I, I usually will grab the yellow. But in this case, one of the things that's important in curries is the, uh, is the color. Right. And I mean, even when, you, when you get into uh, uh, Thai curries, they even name their curries after the color. I'm going to go ahead and throw the, uh, the pumpkin in now, because the longer the pumpkin gets to cook, the better. But also, the pumpkin, as it, uh, as it cooks in here, going to release some uh, some liquids so that it'll help us from having to de uh, deglaze too much. And we're doing no oil. Absolutely. So. So if we, we were talking about this earlier. It is there is no added oil, but for people who are uh, are worried or are, are thinking uh, weight loss, this dish I do use a full can of uh, of. Uh, of uh, coconut milk in it, so yeah. it, it does have a fair amount of oil. It is not, I don't think of this as a low calorie dish, but. Uh, it'll be rich, it'll be higher in um, fat. They could always use light coconut milk yes. if they wanted to lighten it up a little bit. Well, and actually, so the thing about a curry, I mean, the, the, the elements to making a curry sauce, you know, you get the cellulose from the, from the onion, which is going to uh, cook down and, uh, and, and thicken. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you add a liquid. And the liquid that I choose, I'm going to use the, uh, the coconut milk. I'm also going to use the bada bing bouillon. You can make a curry just with the bouillon. Uh, in fact, a lot of curries call specifically just for bouillon, so you can do a, a very low-cal curry. It's still delicious. Uh, 
it's not going to end up being as sweet. Okay. So I'm going to keep cooking this down until I see the, uh, the onion. You can see the onion is getting translucent. It's getting soft. In just a little bit, we're going to start seeing color to the onion. And that's the point where we're going to add the, uh, the next ingredients. Okay. So I've seen in some recipes online that they call like a, a curry, um, like a gravy. Mm -hmm. They call it a gravy. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah, and I think that comes from the British tradition. You okay. Know, and you, when you go to when you go to England, they'll refer to the curry more frequently as a gravy than anywhere else. But, okay. But you know, since it was the British that colonized India, a lot of the language around curry uh, comes from the British. So, yeah, it is not uncommonly uh, used the term gravy, and I think that gives us a good sense of the consistency we're going for. All right. And then people use curry powders in like. Sometimes they'll make like a chickpea salad, but they'll add um, a curry spice to that. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you can use it in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be just um, a soup or a stew or Absolutely. a sauce. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, you know, very, very versatile. Uh, uh, and as we'll see, we'll talk a little bit later once we get this uh, simmering. Um, there's so many different flavors uh, that uh, that can legitimately be called a curry. Uh, you know, I get people that'll come into the store that'll say, well, I don't like curry. And we'll, we'll start talking through different flavors that they do and don't like. And a lot of times we can find, maybe there's one or two spices that they don't want to find in it, but we, uh -huh. you can find a curry that doesn't have it. So. Right. So don't tell me you don't like curry. <laughs> okay, we're getting close, so I'm going to go ahead and move really, this along. It smells really, really good. All right, here we go. I've actually never cooked with a sugar pumpkin. I have to be honest. Really? I, re I have not. Oh. I, you know, I use a lot of other squashes. Um, I love kabocha and butternut and acorn. I got my kabocha and, right there. Yes, I love <laughs> them. Um, but I've never, I have actually never cooked with one of these. I'm terrible. I bought them and used them as decorations. Uh, great for pumpkin pies. Yeah. All right, so this is... Uh, uh, Ginger, okay. Um, we'll and show I, you know, here for the up camera. Okay. So, and again, you can see with the ginger, I, it's, it is minced, but not really finely minced. I like to have chunks, okay. particularly in the ginger. I love little chunks of ginger where you'll get bites of, uh, of spiciness and flavor and sweetness coming out. And it out looks of like you. you peel your ginger. I do absolutely. Okay. And in terms some of how people don't, I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, I, I would don't. think that you would. They I, would, I peel yeah. it too. I didn't bring, oh here, this, this is, in terms of how much ginger, when I think ginger, I think ginger in terms of, of a finger, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a finger of ginger. Yeah. That's about a finger of ginger. Sometimes, you know, a big fat one, I think of that as a thumb. Okay. That's just oh, that's the way good. I think. That's good, yeah. Okay. That so helps. That's the ginger, and this is the garlic, and again, for this dish, the garlic, I've got pretty big pieces. That's kind of chopped yeah. garlic, not mm -hmm. even, I wouldn't even call that minced. That's about three large cloves of garlic. Okay. And you're looking down on this, you can see that the, that the, the, the pan is starting to glaze over, yes. so we're gonna put just a little bit of liquid in it. Okay. This and this is me. the moment. I love when you do that, the release of the, of the yeah. aromas. <laughs> That's when you know you're cooking, okay. It smells amazing. And actually, you can see that the, the, the cuts on the, uh, the pumpkin are already get, starting to soften, yeah. which means that the pumpkin is cooking. Um, uh, and then so the, does this get pureed, or it's left uh, um, No, we're going to leave it just like chunky. this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, Have you ever tried making it in the Instant Pot? Because I know somebody's going to ask. No. And, <laughs> and you know, I'm not that great with the Instant Pot. Okay. I hope someone out there is better, because for me, this takes, the whole thing from start to finish takes about 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. I'll bet in an Instant Pot you could do it a whole lot faster. Um, I'm going to use two of our spice blends that are going to go in this now. Okay. Uh, the first one we talked about, which is the Bokop Curry. I'm going to put two tablespoons in. Now, this is a spicy dish, so we're going to use a lot of spices. Mm, yum. Here's the two tablespoons. And then I'm oh. also going to add some salacious, which is a salt substitute. Okay, so it, this is by far my favorite salt substitute because 
it actually does like taste this, yeah. like salt. Yeah. So the others have really good flavor. I love them all. But this one tastes like salt. For me, what's important about it, and you know, for a long time, I just couldn't do a salt substitute because so many salt substitutes, it's just one really good tablespoon there. So many salt substitutes rely on... Can I stir it? Yeah, that rely is. on chemicals. Right. And, you know, I'm just really all about, you know, real natural food. And uh, uh, if you can't find a way to do it using natural foods, why would you do it? Yeah. Well, you hit it out of the ballpark with yeah. that. So I love the, uh, that. With the, uh, the salacious, it's all completely natural ingredients. Everything that goes in it was grown on a farm. Oh, that's so good to know. Yeah. I'm going to go, we're going to go ahead and a put more. all this in. Take it all. No, all of it. Yeah, nice. we're close enough. Okay. And you guys, this smells so amazing. I'm so excited. Actually, you know what we have to do? I'm going to. Did you write this recipe down? I will tonight. Okay. I, I would be telling you. They're gonna, everybody's going to want to make it. You want to want to just uh, do one and a half bell peppers and just sure. cut, them, cut them into big chunks like that, like uh, really two inch square. Really big chunks. Square. Big chunks, yeah. You know, so I mean, a, a, when I think of a curry, you've got the uh, you've got the sauce, and then you've got pieces in it that you want to eat. And so okay. I want these to be pieces that you want to eat. Do you have a garbage bowl? Uh, right here. Perfect. Now the other thing about it, you don't like the bokop curry, you could have made this with uh, with any of our curries. You could you could use it with a half a dozen different Indian curries. Uh, you could make this Moroccan. Um, How uh, do we know which which blend to use for what dish? How would we know? You know, it's, a lot of it really depends on you and what you like and what you want to have. You know, play with it, find the flavors that you personally like, and that's what's important. Trying to get rid of all the seeds. You didn't want the seeds, right? No. This big? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I would, some, something you'd stick on a fork. <laughs> okay. So this is like a stew. Yeah. So to me, I think of a curry, I think, you know, the components of the curry are the sauce, and the, the chunks, which in our case are almost always uh, chunks of vegetable. Too big? Yeah. Or? No. No, they're good. I think they're great. Okay. Let's put those in. You're going to get my thumb. No, there. no, I'm not going to take <laughs> I'm not going to be responsible for Nick losing the tip of a finger. Can you smell that, Tom? Isn't that delicious? It's amazing. Okay, so you just want like half of this. Yeah, half okay. of that's fine. We'll keep this. And then you know what? I didn't. I didn't get anything to a chili, so let me pick a chili out here. Ooh, that would be fun. Oh, this is so colorful, too. It's beautiful. Perfect for fall and winter. So <laughs> I, I know that Tammy likes a little bit of heat, and I like I some do. heat, so I'm comfortable adding some. What I'm going to use, didn't think this through. It was really kind of the first thing I grabbed from my, my own uh, spice counter here, but... Uh, this is a, a Darabol chili powder. Uh, Darabol is a nice chili. Uh, it's about the same heat as a uh, as a cayenne, or that you know what we we yeah. use. A, the cayenne that we use is uh, about forty thousand uh, uh, Scoville units, about the same. Uh, but it's got a deeper, richer flavor than cayenne, and a slightly smoke, slight smokiness oh. to it. Not that it's been smoked, but a natural smokiness. Nice. So I'm just going to shake a little bit in. Probably the equivalent of about a quarter teaspoon, I think, is going to be plenty. There's already some heat in the bokop. That's just going to perk it up a little bit. So what spices are in the, the bokop? I can look here. Yeah, why don't you read it off to us? Yeah. So um, mild curry from South Africa has coriander, fenugreek, cardamom, which you know I love cardamom. That's my favorite. Turmeric, cumin, pepper, chiles mustard seed, clove, ginger, and fennel. Oh. Wow. So actually, the, uh, one of the interesting things is in the, in the bokop curry, without the added chili that I just did, the main source of heat in that chili actually is from the mustard seed. I use a black mustard seed, which, mm -hmm. is, which is the hottest. 
It's, it's got a very distinctive, uh, uh, like a horseradish flavor to it. Yeah. And, and you get a lot of flavor out of it. So I'm going to add now just... Oh, hold it up here for the... For there. Oh, yeah. This is, this is just a can of, uh, just a can of uh, uh, coconut milk. Um, you know, this we get from, uh, from Costco. It's organic. Uh, and I'm just going to put the whole can in. That's, if you don't, if you have it in any... Thing other than this, this is just a little bit less than two cups. I think it's like one and three quarters cups comes out of a can. Okay. And we're just going to stir that in. And so what you've got here is you've got you've got the cellulose in the onions, you've got the fat in the in the uh, in the coconut milk, and that's what's going to thicken this. So at this point, we're just going to put this aside. We're going to let it simmer. And uh, uh, the last step that we're going to do to prepare the curry is to add the greens. But uh, what I'm going to do is let's, uh, I think I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it over to the stove so that you and I can go through some, have a, have a conversation about some different curry sure. flavors. Sure. Okay. Sounds great. Oh, it just smells amazing and it's beautiful. Yeah. So the visual, I yeah, think, is so important to is. a curry. Okay. So we have the... Um, dish is just going to simmer on the stove for a while and we're going to talk about different um, curry blends. Mm -hmm. All right. So you you wanted to talk about you know the the tradition of curry. Yes. And so let's just kind of take a step back and ask ourselves what is curry? Uh, because we use the term to refer to a lot of different things. Uh, the word itself curry comes from a Tamil word which is curry. Uh, and in the Tamil language, which is, you know, Tamil is a, a, uh, a region in southern India where most of the spices come from, uh, it's used uh, either to, be, to refer to any blend. Okay. Uh, it can be, it's also sometimes used to refer to any sauce. Uh, but, but specifically in what we think of is a, a dish that is a spice-based sauce, uh, generally with vegetables in it, and sometimes with other, other proteins. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, you know, that, that, that is the, the southern Indian curry, which is mostly what we think about, but also we have uh, tradition for curry that exists throughout southern Asia that I, I think is original and, and, and wasn't, uh, you know, didn't begin with India. You know, we have the, the wonderful Thai curries, we have the Malaysian curries, we have Vietnamese curries. Yeah. There are Japanese curries, Chinese curries. Uh, but I think if you go from India towards Europe, a lot of, a lot of what you'll see in curries were influenced by the spice trade. Uh, you know, the sailing ships coming through carrying spices from India uh, and, uh, and influencing uh, uh, the, the cuisine in different countries. So we have a lot of, of, uh, of African curries. The Bokop is one. Um, one of my favorites, which is from Northern Africa, is the Berberet. Uh, the Berberet, which is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a spicy, like I like to refer to it as a, a blend between a, a, a chili powder and a curry. Um, and then, you know, it goes from there off into the Caribbean, and we have Caribbean curries, and, and you know, they, they can be found almost throughout the globe. And, you know, to me, the one defining thing is, is as we said, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a spice-based sauce with primarily vegetables and, and, and potentially other sources of protein in it. So in the different spice blends, is there one or two spices that are always included? No, there's, there's, there, yeah, there, 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 well, actually, I'm trying, thinking it through. Maybe ginger. Okay. Maybe garlic, which were in the original, you know, the oldest curries. Um, uh, you know, a lot of us think of turmeric as a, as a curry flavor. Uh, you know, I did bring this one, which uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with, but this is, it's curry leaf. It's the leaf from a, from a bush. And... Some people will tell you that a real curry has to have curry leaf in it, but there are a lot of curries that don't. I'll let you smell it. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you'll find curry leaf in some things. I think a lot of times when people come to me and say they don't like curry, we'll come into some of the, the less common and maybe less popular. Fenugreek is a, a lovely, lovely flavor, but some people uh, uh, don't connect well to it, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, cardamom is a curry. You know, it's, you can basically take any of the of the very very strong aromatic spices. 
Uh, one of the things that I think about with curry is in blending a curry to begin with, you're breaking all the rules. Because okay. when, I, when I talk to people about how to blend, make spice blends, there are certain types of spices that I say, well, these ones, you know, if you put too much in, you know, you're, you're, it's, you're gonna blow yourself away. You, you have to be very careful with this one. But curries tend to take all of those flavors and put tons of them in all at once, and it still manages magically to, to blend together in a way that is just so delicious. And magical. It tastes delicious. So I was talking to an Indian chef, and he was telling me that if you are in India and you go into a, a shop and you want to buy a curry blend, they are going to laugh at you. They're, you're not going to find one because they don't sell them because everybody makes their own at home. Right. So and we're, we're also influenced by the French tradition where, uh, where our cuisine is designed by, defined by important chefs and in some cases even governmental bodies to say this is the flavor. In, in India, it's, uh, the, the flavor, our flavors are driven at the local level, in the home, at the hearth. And, you know, for example, mostly when, when we see uh, East Indian people come into our store, they will almost never buy a blend. Uh -huh. And the reason why is that nothing that I could blend will ever compare to what their mother did at home. And I'll agree. That's right. <laughs> their mother's was the best. Yeah. So you're right. It's, and, and, and the variations are not purely cultural. They literally are, you know, not even, not even geographic. It is literally hearth to hearth, family to family uh, in the different traditions. Okay. So, so I totally agree. So let's let's play. Okay. Uh, I'm going to lay out. So uh, let's begin with the Indian uh, curries. What we've got, I have Madras, Vadavan, and Tandoori, and I've got sample bags here that you can that you can use to smell. And okay, I'm, great. I'm going to send you home with these to go home and play. Oh, and this one which is absolutely a curry, mm -hmm. garam oh, masala. I love this, Yeah, I, I, especially yours. So it's one of so the things good. that I do in my garam masala that's different and everybody, you do something, things a little different that you add to it. Uh, I blend a little bit of milled nigella seed into it. Oh. And the nigella seed gives it an umami backing and, and a slightly bitter flavor that just, I think it gives it more depth and more carry. I like the nigella seed. Yeah. Tandoori, also madras. called black cumin seeds black for some cumin. reason. Yes. Why is that? Because it's not it's not cumin. I don't know. Okay. And wow. Yeah. I dump Nick. That's a first. Well, so <laughs> interestingly, uh, a product that I think will probably before the end of the year be carrying actually is black cumin. Okay. Which is a uh, it's from Afghanistan. It's only wild harvested, but it's it is a uh, it is a totally indigenous form of cumin that is. Very, very dark in color and has a distinctive flavor, but it is a cumin. But nigella, to me, it tastes nothing like cumin, no, looks not nothing like cumin. You don't use it the same way. Kind of more like black pepper to me. A yeah. little bit like black pepper, do you think, or no? I Could kind be. of I kind of feel like it's it's a little bit when people ask me, does it taste like cumin? No, it doesn't. I would say yeah, it's more totally like different. Yeah, something different, but it's delicious. Okay, so, so, so let's start with the garam masala, which you, you you're familiar with. But yes, I love it. You can go ahead and try that. Oh, and, and I've I, I, uh, Oh my gosh. I took the liberty so of amazing. creating this for you if you want. That's to, to cleanse your palate as you smell. Ah. Mmm. Uh -huh. Oh, this, this smells so good. Yeah. Love so, it. So, and, you know, garam masala, well, is it a curry? Think of, I mean, I, I, I'm sure there's a, a vegan alternative, but the very, very traditional dish, butter chicken. Uh, oh, is with, mm -hmm. made with garam masala and it's a spice-based sauce with, with uh, vegetables and, and, and some other protein to it. Um, another, one of my favorites uh, is the vadavan. Um, vadavan is uh, from southern India from the Pondicherry region, which is just south of, uh, of the, the port city of uh, Chennai, which used to be called Madras. Um, vadavan is a very traditional blend. Uh, it's it's incredible, oh. yeah, very sweet, very, very mm -hmm. aromatic. What I love about it is uh, the region it comes from, Pondicherry, first of all, culturally, uh, they're Hindi, uh, which means that they are primarily, if not exclusively, vegetarian, so that the food that comes out of there is well suited for, for vegetables. Um, but it's also, this is sometimes called the French curry. It has a uh, 
There is some French influence in it. Primarily, uh, you, when you do the saute, uh, you'll do a combination of olives and shallots. Mm -hmm. uh, but Pondicherry was also, uh, for a period of time, uh, a colony of uh, France. So that's the uh, that's kind of the connection there. It has a little bit of vanilla in it, of all things. Well, so that's my own addition. I mean, okay. it's 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 supposed to be a very sweet, and I don't like adding sugar. Uh, so I found by adding the uh, the vanilla bean, uh, we are getting that sweetness and yeah. the richness in it, and it works. I love that. That's great. Um, <clears throat> so that's the bottom on. So madras, and let's talk a little bit about this term because I almost feel like I shouldn't use the word. Okay. <laughs> this is a madras curry, and it's you'll see it everywhere. And the reason why you'll see it everywhere is because uh, madras, the uh, it's it's not the name of the region it's from, which a lot of people might think. Uh, madras, uh, now known as Chennai, uh, during the the days of of uh, days of sail. Um, all of the spices that were shipped out of India were shipped out of the port of Madras. So virtually anything that had spices in it was considered a Madras this or a Madras that. So you'll see, you'll see Madras chilies that are, look red, you'll find ones that, are, that look green, you'll find ones that are sweet, you'll find ones that are savory. Very, very different, and there's a lot of differentiation to them. But in my case, I make it a very savory kind of a, a blend. It's driven by coriander and cumin. Uh. Uh, again, it's, it's very uh, uh, aromatic. Uh, we draw a lot of heat from black pepper in the madras in my madras curry. Okay, it smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it just you know, like a lot of our stuff, it 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 plays really really well with vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that on the backs of these because you tell what it's good for and veggie dishes, veggie dishes. Yeah. Wonderful. And then the last of the of the Indian, <clears throat> this is our tandoori seasoning. And tandoori is, is made as a, it's a, it's a drier curry. Uh, usually you would blend this uh, with yogurt. You could certainly mm -hmm. use a vegan yogurt to make it. And then it's used uh, mm -hmm. uh, to coat uh, whatever it is that you are, you're gonna cook in the tandoori oven, which is a, a subterranean, very, very high temperature oven. Mm -hmm. uh, is it clay? Is yeah. that the clay? Yeah. yeah, the clay. And they use a lot of dye too, don't they? When they, in India, like red dye when they're making I, a So I don't know about dye. Dish. I know that they add red color. Red Frequently the red color comes coloring. from, will come well, or it'll come from paprika or it'll come from ah. uh, what's called a Kashmiri chili. And Kashmiri chili, it's, again, it's a misnomer because, you know, there are a lot of different chilies that are called a Kashmiri, but it's basically a red medium heat chili that uh, you'll find in Indian and in uh, 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 Pakistani cooking. So it'll give you that deep red. You will color. get it. You, I mean, I, I'm not, not I'm not sure I'm going to go deep red, but okay. you do get a red color for it. <laughs> okay. and, and if you see a really really deep red, it it, it could well be uh, be colored. Okay. Which I, I would, not something I necessarily would agree with. Uh, so, so let's just move over to Africa because the you know we started with the bokap, which is from southern Africa, northern Africa, and this is let's just let's just leave it at uh, at Morocco. Um, well, we talked about the berberet. We may as well start there. Berberet, which is Ethiopian and Eritrean, mm -hmm. and mm. oh, now that smells completely different yeah, than so this, from all the rest. This is. Probably 60% chilies. Okay. And we, you know we use a blend of chilies. They're 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 primarily you know medium heat. Uh, you'll get a lot of chili flavor, uh, which makes you think that it's really hot, but it's really not that hot. Even people that uh, that don't like really spicy things will, will, will like enjoy this. this. One? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the driving flavors in the the Berberet is fenugreek, which has kind of a maple -y flavor to it. In fact, the, the primary use in the world today of uh, fenugreek is uh, the main ingredient in artificial maple flavoring. Really? Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Um, but this is one of my favorite flavors. Uh, I, I've, I've got recipes out on, uh, on YouTube for cooking a, a micere wat, which is a lentil dish, mm. completely vegan. And, very easy to make and uh, incredibly aromatic. If you don't like, uh, if you don't like the flavor or the smell of this, don't make it because you'll be smelling it for about three days after you. Oh, hook really? It. Yeah. Okay. Good one to make when you can open the windows. Yeah. 
So this is Nick's favorite, you guys, and this one, it smells a lot different yeah. than all of the rest Are of you, them. Have you, have you cooked with Burberry? I have not. Oh, I, you're going to love it. Okay. You're going to love it. It's my my, my sir, my sir it's a, it's, Okay. Yeah. And that's on, you have it on YouTube? I have it on YouTube and the, the recipe's on our, on the, on our website as okay. well. Okay, I'm going to try uh, it. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's very similar to what we're doing right now. The stew, though, is uh, uh, tomato-based. Begins, you know, I, I tend to use canned tomatoes because I like chunks. Okay. But a lot of times you, know, you can use crushed tomatoes or even a tomato sauce and a little bit of tomato paste. Okay. Delicious. We like chunky um, soups and uh, North Africa, uh, uh, Morocco. Uh, I'm going to start with the, light, the, the, the less common of the two. This one is called La Cama. Okay. La Cama in Spanish means the bed. And as the bed, this is the basis for many, many, many Moroccan dishes. The main flavors to it are uh, ginger, turmeric, and cinnamon. Mm. And we use the salon cinnamon, which is correct. But, you know, it's, it's got strong spices, but smell it, it's not... It's not muscular. Oh. It's more, to me, it's more floral, softer. It's just a lovely, beautiful flavor. Almost sweet. Yeah. Right? It's very, yeah, very aromatically sweet. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I find, you know, with the, the Moroccan uh, curries, that aromatic sweetness, I think, is kind of the signature note behind them. Okay. So it's good with soups or with grains. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, this one we'll do a, a lot of times. We'll just add it to rice when we're cooking it or, or quinoa or whatever we're doing. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's great in salads. It's great on, as, you know, as the bed. It's good on anything or it's a, it's a good launching point to take this and add flavors to it that you like. It's great with eggplant. Oh, I love eggplant. It has nutmeg in it. <laughs> <laughs> it nutmeg. And, then, and then the, the razo hanout, uh, literally in Arabic, razo hanout means head of the shop. And this is, this is the flashier, this is the muscular super spice bomb from Morocco. <clears throat> it's again, you're going to find it's very aromatically oh. sweet. Um, uh, among more, Moroc even more so than this one. What's that? It, it's more, it has yeah. a more of a sweet note to yeah. it than yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, more, oh. more of, the, uh, of the cardamom, more of the cinnamon, yeah. the sweet flavors. Uh, among Moroccan chefs, they kind of define themselves by uh, by their uh, uh, mm. uh, by their razo hanout. Um, you know, many times they'll refer to it as my sash, oh. <laughs> and That's their so recipes are, are are carefully uh, carefully kept secrets. Oh, okay. Uh, some people will claim that their razo hanout has over a hundred ingredients. I can't imagine why you'd <laughs> want to do that. But <laughs> um, and again. You know, very, very good with vegetables. I think, you know, razo hanout carrots uh, are oh. fabulous. Uh, uh, you know, razo hanout with, uh, with uh, apple. You know, anything that's oh. already naturally sweet and you're adding the aromatic sweetness from the razo hanout is fantastic. Okay. And you need to have a cookbook. <laughs> no. You do. So, you know, I'm a spice guy. I love seasoning. I'm yeah. good at spices. I don't really think of myself as a cook. I, oh, but you are. And you're always cooking up. We'll do this things. together. Okay. You cook, I'll, I'll give you the spices. <laughs> okay. So, you know, moving to China, this is uh, Xinjiang. It, uh, it is Cantonese. Excuse me. Okay. We, we were going to have uh, five spice too. I didn't bring it, I guess. But this one. <clears throat> Moderate heat. Yeah. yeah. So people, a lot of people know the five spice, oh. which is very, very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. A very, very similar flavor, but it's not as sweet. This is more of a savory mm. flavor. Um, nice. And, uh, and, it, and it builds up very nicely into a, into a curry-type sauce. Oh, it says sweet, playful aromatics. That, that really describes it well. Yeah. Okay. And this is, this is just a fraction of what's in the world, but this is, this is what, what we sell. Mm. The last one, I, I didn't bring you, a, uh, didn't bring you a, a sample of this to smell, but this one... It's, it's Turkish baharat, and the reason I didn't oh. create a sample of it is I put it in because baharat is a different tradition of curry. It's, uh, it's Arabic, uh, Arabic and Persian. Um, the only one that I make is, is Turkish, and in Turkey they add, uh, uh, they add peppermint and oregano to it, which makes it very uncurryish. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, the base, the base spices to it, it's, it's got more nutmeg. Uh, nutmeg, cumin, coriander, oregano, salon cinnamon, and peppermint. Oh, um, peppermint. Yeah. 
So it's just the, the, the you know, the, this is one, traditionally the oregano and the, and the peppermint would both be the fresh herbs that you serve it with. Yeah. And in this case, I blend them in as, as, as dry ingredient. Okay. But, but uh, baharat is another totally distinct uh, 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 curry tradition. So we have all these different um, curry blends from all these different countries. What about the U.S.? So I ask myself that all the time, and the question is, in regional American cooking, is there a curry? Is there a, is there a traditional American curry? And, you know, the best I can come up with, I think, are some of the Cajun blends. Uh, okay. You know, the, the, the blackening spice or the, or the Louisiana Cajun blend, which is, it's a, it is a, uh, you know, definitely it's a, it, you know, it's a, it, it's a spice-based uh, blend, and when you're making a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a gumbo or, a, or whatever, it, it is definitely a, a spice-based sauce right. that we add vegetables to. So I, I think that would I think be that, our version. That's what I. That's where okay, I'm at. I'm, I like I'm it. calling it the American curry, and <laughs> I'm going like to stick it. with it. That's great. So, do you have um, favorites? Ah, no, I try not to play favorites with my children. I love okay. them all the same. Okay, you do favor this one. <laughs> I, you know, I love Berberet because it's because okay. it is, you know, the, the flavor and the heat are so intense and so complex, I find it incredibly satisfying. Okay, nice. This has been so interesting. I've learned a lot and I have a lot to play with when I get home and yeah. try out. Yeah, and I, so. I want to I I report back. Oh, dear. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Now I've got homework to do now, too. All right. So, huh. do you think that our I think it's ready. Pumpkin, if, it's uh, ready. If you guys are ready for it, so yeah, what we're going to do is we'll, it. we'll move it back over here, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll, that was so we'll add great. the greens. So, as you can see, our curry dish is uh, has thickened nicely. What I'm going to do is uh, uh, just to speed it up a little bit. I think I want it a little bit thicker, but I also want to wilt the kale. So, I'm going to put the kale in now, and then we're going to. Go ahead and turn it up and let it thicken with the kale in it at the same time. So this kale, you know, just take your pick of greens. It doesn't have to be kale. You can, you can do collards. You can do mustard greens. Any kind of green that you want. Um, this happens to be a, a Tuscan kale, which is uh, a lot of fun. It's a little bit softer than most kales. Yeah. It won't have to cook for quite so long. I'm going to stir it in, and then we're going to we're going to turn the heat up and just let this uh, let this reduce for a second. And we'll be ready in just about a, just a couple of minutes. And that added even more color yeah. to it. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, you can see how important those bell peppers are in the yes, color. Yes, absolutely. Gorgeous. This is the beautiful of an induction range, how quickly the heat. I find, I don't know about you, but I find the induction ranges, I have more control over the heat than I do with my, uh, my, uh, my Wolf gas range at home. Yeah. I. I told Tom when we um, redo our kitchen that I want to go all in Dutch. Me too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's so much cleaner too. Yeah. You have instant heat and then when you don't want it, it's, you can turn it off and it's gone. You don't even have to turn it off. That's the beautiful well, thing about true. it. Second I pull this pull it pot off, off it, tr it shuts down yeah. so it's safer. And I think that's it. Wow, that's fast. Like I said, just when the rice is done. Perfect. So you also cooked the rice in a little bit of coconut milk. I as did. Well. So and it's not necessary, but it uh, I like the coconut flavor, and I like to have a little bit of flavor to the rice. So I, I put some uh, I uh, uh, I put the the zest from a lime, uh -huh. and just a half a can of coconut milk in it. It's and what not, kind of rice did you use? That's a, just a, a long grain basmati. I love that. So my uh, my wife is a hardcore. Uh, does that work? My wife is a hardcore brown rice person. I just I, I <clears throat> you know, and when I do brown rice, and I have the time, I like to do it in the instant pot. But yeah. I just find with the rice cooker, it doesn't doesn't cook all the way. I'm just not happy with it. Okay. Well, our family loves white rice too, so I do make white rice occasionally as well. And we love the basmati or the jasmine rice. Yeah. Just have a nice aroma. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think to put the curry on, I'm going to get a little bit of something, just a little deeper, like a ladle. Yeah, good idea. Let's oh, get some wow. pumpkin. Beautiful. And then let's put a little bit of extra gravy. There you go. It. And there you go. That is gorgeous. Look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh. You want to try? I do. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. Got to have a little bite of everything in this. Okay, it's gonna I have to blow on it. It's hot. <laughs> it's super hot. I don't want to burn my tongue, especially not on camera. No. Mm. You know, that's the thing that's terrified me the most about COVID is lose your sense of smell mm -hmm. and flavor. Oh wow. Mm. It is so delicious. Oh my gosh. Hot. <laughs> it's so hot. It is so good, you guys. Mm. I love the flavor of that curry spice that you used. The, the bokeh. Bo yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And then I think we got the heat profile A little bit, just yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not too hot, but it's got some spice. It's got some kick to it, but not too hot. And so the, delicious. And the key is, it's so simple to make, right? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm going to go get me a sugar pumpkin <laughs> so I can do this. I just, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those that I never use. Well, I can't thank you enough. Today has been amazing. Not only did we learn a new recipe that we can make, but now we have a lot of history and information about curries. And so I hope that helps everybody at home. And I hope you guys will order some curry spices as well as other spices from local spicery because they're my favorite spices ever. They are milled in small quantities. So when you buy them, they are like super fresh. Like you can't get fresher unless you grind them your own, right? And if, you, if you're gonna order through us, order through, uh, through Tammy's page at localspicery.com slash nutmeg notebook. That way we know what you guys like and the content on the page is gonna fit what you're looking for. You know, we get a lot of people, they call and say, well, how do we find your SOS free spices? How do we find this? How do we find that? Go to Tammy's uh, affiliate page and it's all right there. Yeah, and lots of SOS free spice blends. And I'm always telling people too, Nick, that you know, a lot of people don't know what spices go with what dishes and you know, or which spices to blend together. Go with the, the mixes, the SOS yeah. free spice blends that you've already created because it takes all the guesswork out of it. So, and you've got that New Mexican one too. Yeah. That one is really good. I was, I was wondering how you like that. I love that. Yeah. I, that's one I use all the time. Yeah, that one's the mix really mix. good. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, thank you so much. So good to see you. Thank you guys for coming out. Let's do it again. I hope so. Okay. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Nutmeg Notebook. Click on that bell so you'll get notifications whenever we go live or do a new upload. And hop on over to nutmegnotebook.com. Uh, we will put links in the description below for the blog, for the recipe, and um, we hope that you will come back and join us again. I'm Tammy, and I help you get healthy and stay healthy, one meal at a time. Bye.